Good afternoon. Can I remind members of the COVID-related measures that are in place and that face coverings should be worn when moving around the Chamber and across the Holyrood campus? The next item of business is uh, education skills, uh, skills portfolio questions. Uh, and uh, uh, if a member wishes to request a supplementary question, they should press the request to speak button or enter R in the chat function during the relevant question. Question number one, not lodged. Question number two, not lodged. Question number three, Gordon MacDonald. To ask the Scottish Government what proportion of schools are being reported as in good or satisfactory condition? Cabinet Secretary, Shirley Ann Somerville. School buildings across Scotland are in their best condition since recorded figures began. The proportion of schools in good or satisfactory condition has increased from 61 per cent in April 2007 to 90.2 per cent in April 2021. Gordon MacDonald. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. Thanks to the Scottish Government's Learning Estate Investment Programme, the City of Edinburgh Council are building what they hope to be the first passive house school to replace the current Curry High School based in my constituency. Does the Minister agree with me that investment in our school estate is vital in supporting our young people's learning journey? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I very much um, agree with Gordon MacDonald on this, and the investment in our school estate is absolutely key. That is exactly why we are moving forward with the third phase of the school projects to benefit from the £2 billion learning estate investment programme. Uh, this, of course, uh, builds on the already £1.8 billion in our Scotland Schools for the Future programme, which in itself delivered 117 new or refurbished learning facilities. So far within the current programme, to date, we have 37 projects across 23 local authorities delivering investment in our schools. A supplementary, Michael Mara. Thank you, President Officer. It has been nearly three months since the Cabinet Secretary, in lieu of the long-promised learning estate strategy, uh, the Government released a frankly unacceptable 83-word GIQ answer instead. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell us when a full plan and criteria will be published and what assessment has been done on the impact the proposed projects currently sitting on shelves across the country, including the Western Gateway Primary School in Dundee, due to the delay of this Government? Cabinet Secretary. Well, there has uh, been no delay in the project, and I would, of course, point out to all members that it is, of course, uh, the obligation and responsibility for local authorities uh, for the upkeep of the school estate. This money provided by the Scottish Government is in addition to that. Uh, we are, of course, working very closely with our partners um, in, the, in the Scottish local authorities uh, to ensure that the criteria is discussed and uh, agreed. Uh, the criteria for the Phase 3 will be agreed by the Learning Estate Investment Programme Governments Board, which, of course, as expected, should include COSLA, the local authority representative groups, Scottish Government and the Scottish Futures Trust. And, uh, as I have said in the past uh, to Michael Mara and to other members, uh, if they wish to have suggestions uh, for the criteria for that, that we would, of course, welcome their contributions. Question number four, Sarah Boyack. To ask the Scottish Government what plans it has to offer home fee status to refugees and other people displaced from Ukraine who wish to study in Scotland. Minister Jimmy Hepburn. The First Minister has called on the UK Government to follow the EU's example by waiving all visa requirements for those resident in Ukraine who have been impacted by the Russian invasion that are looking to seek refuge in the UK. Individuals who are granted refugee status by the Home Office and come to Scotland to live and study will be eligible for home tuition fee status and student support. We are currently considering the impact of those who have been displaced as a result of the crisis in Ukraine and wish to study in Scotland. We are taking forward discussion with the sector on the issue and we are keen to find a solution where possible. Sarah Boyack. Can I welcome that commitment to address the situation and say to the Minister there will be refugees and family members who are studying in Ukraine who will be coming um, within days. So everything we can do will be um, important. Can I confirm with the Minister what discussions the Scottish Government has had with universities and colleges to make sure those students do have that chance to keep studying and can be matched with appropriate degree and college classes so that they don't miss out? And we all hope the invasion will be over as soon as possible, but given that people's homes and buildings have been destroyed across Ukraine, does the Minister agree that helping those students to continue learning will be important in helping Ukraine recover and rebuild in the future? Minister. Uh, yes, I, I do. I think there are two things at play here. We must do everything we can to support those uh, Ukrainian nationals who are here already, and there are a number here already studying in Scotland. 
And indeed, we must also reach out and make sure we support those who come to Scotland. In due course, and Ms Boyack is quite right to point out that some will be here uh, imminently. Uh, I have uh, met with all university college principals. I met with them on the 2nd of March to discuss the current situation, how we can uh, collectively uh, respond to it. I, I was uh, heartened to see the, uh, the sector uh, embracing and responding in the appropriate fashion and collectively. That is what we will continue to do to make sure that we support uh, those students who are here and those who will come. A supplementary co Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I would like to ask the Scottish Government if it, will, if it will be taking action to offer support to Ukrainian and Russian students who have been financially impacted by the war. Minister. Uh, well, can I firstly uh, thank um, the, the, the member for the, the question? In that she, makes a, she also mentioned Russian students, and I think it is important that we bear in mind not everyone in Russia, not every Russian student here is a supporter of the Russian regime, and we must uh, make sure we are reaching out to them just as we reach out to the Ukrainian uh, community uh, here. Uh, I go back to the answer I, I gave. I have had that discussion with uh, universities, with uh, colleges. There is financial support through hardship funds, which international students can access through the specific coronavirus funding we have put in place uh, in the first instance, but we continue to engage to have that dialogue, to have that discussion, to make sure that uh, where we need to go further, we will. A supplementary, Martin I am very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I echo the, the comments of the Minister with regard to Russian students? Can I ask a similar question? Given the hope there are 3,000 refugees on their way, and it would appear that most of those will be single parents with children, what discussions have been had with regard to the schooling, the education that these children will need on their arrival in Scotland? Minister. It, well, I know that there has been a concerted discussion with COSLA uh, in relation to that. And of course, Cabinet Secretary is leading on that rather than myself, so I don't have the full detail of those discussions, but I'm sure if the member wants to write to us, we'll be able to give them more details. Question number five, Richard Leonard. Deputy Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Government when it last met Scotland's university principals. Minister. Well, as mentioned a moment ago, along with officials, most recently I met Scotland's university principals on the 7th of March to discuss the Ukraine crisis, its impact on the sector, and how students and staff are being supported. Richard Leonard. Uh, can I thank the Minister for his response? When the Minister talks to university principals, does he raise with them the university's pension dispute? Has he asked them why employees in Scotland have rejected the university and college union's compromise proposals, which would avoid, avoid an average 35 per cent cut in members' pension guarantees? Has he asked them why they have made no attempt whatsoever to meaningfully engage with the UCU? with the result that, as from next week, a further five days of industrial action will take place. Will he call on them to revoke these cuts, re-enter negotiations, show some leadership and settle once and for all this long-running dispute which they have quite consciously and intentionally provoked and prolonged? Minister. Well, the member, with some rhetorical flourish, asked me if I engage with the sector on these matters. It may come as no surprise to him that, yes, indeed, I do engage with the sector on these matters. This has been an issue that I have uh, discussed with both uh, the uh, employers and uh, unions uh, alike. My uh, clear expectation is that there should be dialogue, there should be meaningful dialogue. It should take place on the basis of the principles of uh, the fair work approach we take. It is for uh, the universities and the unions uh, to resolve this. I want to see minimal uh, impact on uh, students uh, and staff uh, alike, and my sincere uh, desire is that the parties engage in meaningful, proper dialogue and resolve the matter. Question number six, Katie Clark, who is joining us remotely. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to ensure that all apprentices are paid the real living wage. Minister. As employees, apprentices' wages are set by employers in line with the national minimum wage, which is a reserved matter for the UK Government. But through our fair work policy, we encourage every employer to reward their staff fairly and, where possible, to pay at least the real living wage for workers of all ages, including apprentices. We have encouraged the UK Government to abolish the apprenticeship minimum wage rate and a move towards uh, the real living wage of £9.90 per hour for all workers. We are fully committed to promoting fair work practices throughout Scotland and will continue to press the UK Government for the full set of powers around employment law so we can fully deliver our fair work ambitions. Casey Clark. 
As the Minister knows, the national minimum wage for apprenticeships is only £4.30 per hour if the apprentice is 19 or under uh, or in the first year of their apprenticeship. Does the Scottish Government agree with this? And if not, will it make paying the full living wage a condition for employer support? And can it confirm that all apprenticeships in the public sector are paid the living wage? Minister. Um, well, as I've laid out in my initial answer, uh, yes, I do believe that um, uh, the apprentice, apprentice rate should be uh, abolished. There should be a move uh, towards decency in uh, uh, wages uh, across uh, the board, and that includes apprentices. I should say, uh, though, that despite that being the minimum which employers uh, should uh, pay, we have the Scottish Apprenticeship Pay Survey. Uh, the la last one was undertaken in 2018, and the median uh, levels at that uh, stage were considerably above uh, the uh, minimum, uh, the statutory minimum. So we do see employers uh, not paying quite that level and paying uh, above uh, the minimum rate. Of course, if we had a uh, responsibility for uh, these matters uh, here in the Scottish Parliament, we could uh, take the position that we would legislate for uh, the changes that we uh, seek uh, to uh, embed in relation to uh, the living wage more generally, and that's something we'll continue to push for. A supplementary, Beatrice Wishart. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Apprentice minimum wages are not sufficient to enable apprentices to rent privately, yet in rural, remote and island areas such as Shetland, the logistics of daily commuting is not always an option. What steps can the Scottish Government take to ensure adequate provision of affordable accommodation for apprentices, similar perhaps to student accommodation, near to their place of work? Minister. Well, I understand the analogy between uh, students, of course, is not entirely analogous in that those who are apprentices are employees and will uh, not have quite the same uh, living circumstances as students might uh, in terms of uh, living in uh, student accommodation. Uh, we, of course, will take any uh, suggestion uh, that is earnestly made on board, and I am happy to, to consider uh, that. But the real task for us, of course, is to get on with our extensive programme of uh, social house building, which will uh, benefit uh, Ms uh, Wishart's constituency just as well everyone in this uh, chamber's constituency. And supplementary, Bob Doris. Uh, thanks, President Officer. It is important that our apprentices are not just appropriately paid and supported, but have the opportunity to secure clear pathways within the public sector, President Officer. In that regard, can I ask the Minister what steps the Scottish Government have taken to increase the number of apprentices, for example, in Scotland's NHS? Minister. Uh, well, it is, of course, important that uh, every sector plays their part in uh, supporting uh, uh, apprenticeships, uh, and that is as true of the public sector as uh, is the private uh, sector. Uh, the National Health Service is a very active employer of apprentices. I'm uh, very pleased to say they use the various frameworks across foundation apprenticeships, modern apprenticeships and graduate uh, apprenticeship skills. Well, Scotland engages with uh, NHS boards uh, regularly, and indeed, uh, during Scottish Apprenticeship Week uh, last week, the First Minister launched a new £3.4 million Scottish Government recruitment programme, which will see 150 apprentices, pharmacy technicians trained and recruited across Scotland this year. So the NHS is certainly playing its part. Question number seven, Jackie Bailey. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on whether the model to reduce the number of head teachers that is reportedly being proposed by Argyll and Butte Council will improve educational attainment. Cabinet Secretary. I firmly believe that uh, teachers and effective school leaders are the most important factors in improving children's outcomes in our schools and key to ensuring excellence and equity for all. Jackie Bailey is aware the recruitment and deployment of head teachers is a matter for individual councils based on local needs and circumstances. It would not be appropriate for the Scottish Government to interfere in the school management decisions made by Argyll and Butte Council. Irrespective of management structures, I would expect head teachers to be supported by their local authority to work in consultation with parents and young people to achieve the very best outcomes for their learners. Jackie Bailey. Um, educational attainment is a matter for the Scottish Government, and the truth is that parents in Argyll and Butte are opposed to these plans. Teachers in Argyll and Butte are opposed to these plans. And the, the proposal, frankly, is not evidence-based because there is no evidence that reducing the number of head teachers will improve educational attainment. This is fundamentally about cuts to education. So can I ask, what discussions have the Scottish Government had with Argyll and Butte Council about these plans? And does the Scottish Government support this model, which simply cuts the number of head teachers and does nothing to improve attainment 
that they are responsible for. Cabinet Secretary. Well, as uh, Jackie Bailey does uh, say in, in her uh, question there, uh, the Council is currently consulting on these proposals, and I do appreciate there is um, very, very strongly held views by parents, by young people themselves, uh, and by teachers and head teachers in the local authority. And of course, I would encourage them to take part in the consultation process, and of course, then for the local authority to pay very close attention uh, to their responses. I would very much uh, say that leadership is recognised as one of the most important aspects in the success of any school. Leaders at all levels have to be empowered, and those who empower others as part of that can take ownership for the learning within a school. And then we have a very, very strong track record of ensuring the highest quality of learning and teaching. That is what the Scottish Government would wish to see, and I am sure that is shared by all councils right across Scotland. And I have a number of supplementaries, and I intend to take them all. Uh, first, Graeme Simpson. Thank you very much. Well, as the Cabinet Secretary will be aware, it is SNP cuts that have led to councils considering the shared leadership model. And in Labour-run North Lanarkshire, they are looking at shared leadership for schools in the Chrysan area. Does the Cabinet Secretary share the concerns of parents in the Chrysan area that this could lead to a drop in the quality of education? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, this uh, Scottish Government has been determined and uh, has delivered a fair funding settlement for local government in the exceptional difficult circumstances uh, that we have with cuts to our budget coming from the members' UK government. But within that, I have recognised the concerns also that have happened in North Lanarkshire that have uh, been brought to my attention by Fulton McGregor recently, and again appreciate the concerns that are being raised very much by the young people, by the parents and the staff in that area. Consultation is absolutely key to this, as is a genuine understanding uh, that the local authority must have about the strength of opinion on these issues. And of course, this is then a matter for the local authority to carry out uh, the recruitment and retention of the school teachers, including head teachers in their area. A supplementary, Willie Reddy. A bit surprised that the Education Secretary doesn't seem to be that bothered that we're creating superheads all over the country. I reported last month that it's happening in the East Nuka Fife with nine schools with one superhead that locals are very opposed to. In addition to the national cuts, there is clearly a shortage of head teachers as well. A report from 2009 by the government indicated, warned, that there was going to be a shortage of head teachers. But the government doesn't seem to have done anything about it. Why is she so laid back? And why hasn't she got a plan for increasing the number of head teachers? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I pointed out to Mr Rennie, uh, the last time we had this discussion in the Chamber, and I will point out again, the Scottish Government does hold uh, very, very dearly to the uh, evidence that we have that effective leadership within our schools is very key to the highest possible standards within our education sector. It is for local authorities, of course, to make decisions about what that leadership looks like in consultation with uh, parents within the local areas. I do appreciate there is concern um, over a number of local authorities' areas around the decisions that local authorities are taking on this, and I am paying very close attention to that, particularly given the importance that we place on leadership within our schools. Uh, I would point out to Mr Rennie, um, in addition, that we, of course, have the head teacher recruitment working group uh, which uh, met on the 28th of January and is currently discussing these issues to ensure that if any further progress needs to be taken then it will be. Thank you uh, and before I call the next uh, MSP who wishes to ask a supplementary could I just ask members please to show a bit of courtesy and respect if questions are asked please listen to the answers and I think the members know who I'm talking about. Uh, supplementary, Michael Mara. And thank you, President Officer. I mean, the, the, the Cabinet Secretary's session is paying very close attention uh, to the issue. I think the Chamber, but more importantly, parents and pupils across the country, would like to hear directly from the Cabinet Secretary whether she thinks it's important that schools have a single leader, a head teacher, that can le learn, uh, can, uh, build the learning environment for the people in that school and be leaders in that community. This is something we're seeing across the country. Just vague expressions of that it might be important aren't enough. What's her personal position, the Cabinet Secretary's personal position, President Officer, does she think that it's the right thing that we have individual head teachers in our schools? Cabinet Secretary. The government's position on this is something I have made clear um, again and again during these um, uh, 
questions today that leadership within our schools is exceptionally important, and the government has demonstrated that over uh, a number of years with uh, the importance that we have placed um, on head teachers and on the empowerment of head teachers within that. If Mr Mara or other um, members uh, within these chambers who usually uh, tell me not to interfere in local authority matters um, are actually asking me to dictate to local authorities what actually happens in every single school across the country, then let's be very clear that that's what they're asking me to do and the implications of that. But in the meantime, I will continue to ensure that we are working very closely with our local authority partners so they have a real understanding of the importance that the Scottish Government places within leadership in our schools and will continue to work with local authorities on that basis. And question number eight from Gillian Mackay, who is joining us remotely. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking in light of reports of concerns regarding governance at South Lanarkshire College. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Funding Council is responsible for investigating any potential issues around college governance. Following an independent review of governance at South Lanarkshire College, the SFC continue to work closely with the regional strategic body to ensure arrangements are in place to secure good governance, sound leadership and positive outcomes for students. The Minister's paramount interest is safeguarding the quality of learning at South Lanarkshire College and the high standards of governance are crucial to ensuring this. The Scottish Funding Council will continue to provide updates to the Scottish Government as required. Julian Mackay. A number of colleges still haven't implemented the nationally agreed dispute resolution process. What steps is the Scottish Government taking to ensure every college implements Uh, I think we'll try to see if we can get Ms Mackay back. It's not looking too promising. If you give, if you give, if you give us a, just give us a few seconds to see if anything is likely to happen or not. Um, I don't know if the, the if in term, I don't know if the cabinet secretary got enough to really make a stab at it. I think what we'll have to do is. I asked Ms Mackay if perhaps she could write to the Cabinet Secretary with her supplementary and the Cabinet Secretary could then answer that. And I apologise to, to Ms Mackay and to the Chamber. Um, so that concludes uh, portfolio questions uh, and uh, there will be a very short pause before we move on to the next item of business. Right. Okay.